Storytellers AZ, a discussion group for people who make a living telling stories. All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Storytellers AZ, a podcast for anyone who wants to tell better stories. And we are broadcasting from Gangplank Chandler tonight, which is very warm, apparently. It's no one steep. got the memo that it was 70 degrees today in January and... Plenty of the AC does not work when there's 75 people in the building. But anyway, uh, my name is Tyler Hurst. I am still a writer sometimes. And to my left today is Sarah Marcus. And I am a poet and a writer. All right. I'm Elizabeth Newland, realtor, blogger, mom. And you're an actual realtor, like a, re- a realtor, the capital one? Oh, yeah, with the capital okay. R. And right. we, you know, there's like a little symbol that I never use. Registered. And, yeah, yeah. Trademark. That one. Yeah. yeah. And I'm Debbie Walker, and I'm blogger and podcast editor how many kids do you have debbie i have three how many should you have had debbie two <laughs> ouch do you get to pick like i'm not gonna tell you which one i would have given up on. <laughs> not necessarily the last one is that no i think my parents say something like yeah just that first because sometimes it, up uh, there are adult children now with uh, some points in all of their lives they would have been the one i didn't want <laughs> to gotten rid of i can imagine i can imagine all right so if any of debbie's family's listening um uh, they're not <laughs> okay if anyone's listening that's that's part of three children just just be cool because it's probably not you right now um, anyway, today we talked about a couple of cool things. Our first one was talking about the order of storytelling. Um, Elizabeth um, brought up a, a good a good topic about uh, about how some writers and TV shows and whatnot start with the ending. You know, they give us the the uh, the big climactic ending, and then the rest of the the story is spent telling us how we got there. Now, I like this a lot in stuff like Castle TV shows and whatnot. But I don't tend to use it in writing unless that's how the story is told in my head. I don't think that's true, though, because I think you're just not thinking about it. I, I remember that um, blog that you wrote about the horrible event in your life, the college event. Oh, yes. And you told before, um, at the beginning, I guess I did. we knew what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that that's a lot of people, when they tell their stories, they, yeah, you start with the event and then you lead up to it. You did that with the story that you wrote, uh, I Didn't Die Today. Oh, wow. I'm a big liar then, I was saying. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. apparently it works. Um, I don't, uh, to amend my earlier one, I don't do it consciously. That's just how it came out when I wrote it. Um, some people are able to write stories linearly and then chop them up and move them around. Um, others actually write like you know, write the same way someone would shoot a movie or or shoot a TV show. They write out, they write out of order. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't work for me because whatever usually whatever order you see it is what the order I wrote it in. So does anyone do it do anything differently? Do you chop stuff up and go back and forth? I don't, but I don't think like that. And that's what I'm I'm sort of trying to figure out if that would make things more more tension and and make it more interesting because the part of why I think that's successful in things that I like in books or in fiction or uh, TV shows is because it really makes me invested in the action from the very beginning. Whereas like if you start, I, I was thinking about Breaking Bad. It was very, that show Breaking Bad is, is I was completely sucked in because the very first episode, they start with him like he's driving down the road in this Winnebago and he has no pants on and there's a kid next to him in a gas mask and he's like obviously unconscious and he's bleeding. And so I was thinking about the first and then they like go back to him and he's a um, teacher. And the, so they, you flash back and you're like, how the hell did he get from being a chemistry teacher to like what just whatever was just going on there? And so I was trying to think about after I watched that first episode, would it have worked as well for me if they had started with him in the classroom? And that I was, don't think it would have. That was the very first episode. Very first okay, episode. Because I was going to say you almost would need scene. to know the characters to care about them first. No, and I would think so too, but that really worked for me. I was like, oh my God, what just happened? And yeah. I was so sucked in. And then I'm like, what if we, what if it had started with him in the classroom and he's teaching? I'm like, I think I would have been a little bit tuned out, but in the way that they did it i was not i was completely invested and sucked in from the very first minute that i started watching maybe part of the style has to go with what you referenced a little bit later to that you were very quickly and easily bored 
so that when if <laughs> no no <laughs> seriously know. though yeah. that when you start a normal book that starts out with a normal story if we if they would have started the story normal you would have been out of there in five minutes but they started with something that made it really complicated really intriguing and you need that in your stories for you to follow, for you to be worth, That's you know, you're worth the investment. So maybe it's just so maybe it depends of- on the the reader or the whoever's the watcher whether it works on them or not. When um, let's say when you when when all of us were in our I don't know where our prime reading years were, but the time we had the time in our life we had the most time and spent the most time in reading college, high school, you know, teenager, retiree, whatever. Um, I know that a lot of times I skipped ahead and read the ending, and then read the whole book. That's terrible. And that's, but that's, do you do that? No. But that's, mm. that's pretty disappointing. That's, that's the same thing. No, it is actually. I mean, it's really it is not thing. because you're not allowing and the author to dictate how the story is told. I, for some reason, I, I really enjoyed that. Cheating, and I don't know why. Pants. I know. I know. And I don't know why, but I still, but I, but I, I still very much enjoy it. Now, I never ever did I read the ending and then not read the whole book. Really? So it's still, it's it, still in my head. Because what I'm in love with, it's the process of, of the story itself, not what actually happens. I, I don't care what happens. I mean, I, I do, but whatever happens is irrelevant. Um, I care about the, the, the process of the story. So a lot of times, if you have someone who gives an ending that's very, you know, very tightly knit and everything's okay and blah, 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 so everyone's, everyone's happy, I, I'm, I, the story's probably not going to be as good because it's kind of hard to imagine a story where everything works out. So you I know, almost but wanna, that's how most stories end. Well, people I like, like that. Like that. No. So you like happy endings? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Debbie, what do you got? Anything? I know one of your uh, favorite TV shows now, Castle, does this a lot. With um, They just did it with um, Castle and the Lady Cop. Did you enjoy that episode where they showed them uh, kidnapped and tied up and, at yeah. gunpoint? Yeah. Was it, but did it, was it any different than any other one? I mean, did, 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 did the storytelling add to it? No, because I don't really watch Castle because of the stories. What? I watch for... The characters, right? Characters, well, yeah, yes. okay. and how they interact with each other, okay. and hmm. it's much more a play what, than a TV what, yeah, show. whatever it is that they're involved in that week is the secondary reason for me watching the show. Okay, which All actually right. is a good point about Castle because I do think that the real story in Castle is actually the relationship, and of the course. fact that everything else is really the secondary plot line. Course, yes. So that's a good point, and that's the same thing as uh, as Psych. The relationship yeah. between between Gus and and Sean is definitely yeah. the and all the of the one. characters. I think that's like an even mentalist. Same same idea. Super mm. interesting yeah. character studies. So we apparently like character driven dramas over over procedurals or other stuff. Yeah. I don't think that's true. I mean, I think that like they all have their pros mm. and their cons. I think that Breaking Bad is not. It is kind of a character. Oh, it's definitely a character. It's all, it's all about. You haven't seen things. it. What do you know? I've read enough on Wikipedia. Oh, you haven't seen <laughs> it. I did that with uh, Lostpedia too. I know the whole story of Lost, and I've seen like one season. Oh, good. You can't have including the any. beginning and the end. Hmm. I got that down. Hmm. Hey, does anyone know the end of Lost? They all die, all of them. And the whole point of Lost, though, is it's in life the too. Non, we all die also. The nonverbal communication. What you were yeah. talking about earlier was you can't read it in Wikipedia or Lostpedia. You're right. How so and so looked at so and so, and the yes. and the the how the group is acting at the moment, and that was a lot of what I liked about Lost was well, you could just tell who was uh, sympathizing with X this week, and then who was sympathizing with Y next week, and it's almost so like true, like nonverbal cues. You can't yeah. get that out of reading it. Yeah, you yeah. read it. You didn't get to see like how hot Sawyer was. Oh my god! Like, I, that is like a big part. That was I a big am, important part of I it. Imagined him. I imagined him. I don't know. No, not as well as we know. No. <laughs> not as well as they saw him. Yeah. No, Sawyer was awesome. <laughs> I don't, uh, know, I don't know what he's doing nowadays, but I wish he'd come back. He just uh, he had a cameo appearance in the beginning of Mission Impossible 4. I bet he wasn't as hot as he was on the island. That's scruff. No, he was, dre- he was dressed up all nicely. He looked really weird. It's really like quite a few years have gone by, too, you know? So. Yeah. yeah, he's probably old and broken. Anyway, um, <laughs> so we like, we like to tell stories uh, as they come into our heads, and we like the jumbling story storytelling around, but... One movie in particular did not work for Debbie, and we think no. that, that this movie is responsible for most of this, and that's Pulp Fiction. Why didn't you like the way they told that? Well, now that I've seen it multiple times, that's not the problem, because I know it's supposed to be like that. Mm-hmm. But the first time I saw it was in a uh, like a dollar theater, and I thought they had it out of, you know, they put the reels up on out of order, and I'm like, 
I don't understand what's going on in this movie because it's there's no continuing storyline. It's it's like bim, we're in a whole new scene with new people, and I'm like, and what? and you didn't find that intriguing. You actually found that discomforting. Yeah, that, that they it, would. It, it was annoying. Well, mm. I bet. I, I mean, I bet at the time it was kind of gimmicky, and 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 um, what's his name, um, Tarantino, being who he is, I'm sure he was doing that almost oh, on yeah. purpose. Um, of course. Man, the man's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but so, had somebody said, by the way, all the stuff's out of order, I would have enjoyed it more because then I would have been prepared for it. You, well, but so I was you so should have focused. Yeah, ending. you should have looked at the, the reviews. <laughs> I was so focused on the fact that some idiot in this dollar theater screwed up the film for me that I didn't realize that it was supposed to be that way. And it was annoying. All right. And that's what we're going to end on today. So Debbie does not like movies that are out of order, especially at dollar theaters, because they're annoying. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks for stopping by and checking us out. We meet the the second and fourth Wednesday of every month from 7 to 9 p.m. at Gangplank in downtown Chandler, 260 South Arizona Ave. If you'd like to be in the show, if you'd like to talk about the show, if you want to tell us how good-looking you think we all are, uh, email me at tyler at gangplankhq.com. Or Sawyer. Or you can tell, or you can talk to us about Sawyer. That's fine. Oh. I will have a Sawyer discussion. <laughs> um, we also have oh some announcements coming up for any writers. The people that if they don't know about it, uh, Word Camp is coming up the end of February. I think it's February twenty fourth to the twenty sixth. It's also in downtown Chandler. So if you want to uh, learn how to set up blogs or just to make sure that you're doing it correctly, you can do that. We also have, and we are starting because I believe this episode will be up in time. We also have. Uh, we'll be starting this month doing a um, kind of a different version of NaNoWriMo for us. Is we're going to have a February goals. Uh, so we can go around the table and we can talk about each of what our goals are really quick before we end up. Uh, Tyler, my goal is to write 10,000 words. They will be in a combination of rewrites for Mostly True Tales, which I will release on April 31st, or sorry, April 1st, uh, as an ebook. And I'm also going to finish For Guys Like Me, which is a book I'm writing with and for my dad. Um, so that'll happen. Okay, Sarah, what are your goals for February? Uh, my goals for February is to start a blog. I really need to get up um, about um, adding retro flair to your office style in terms of dressing. And so that will be, what did you say, six entries and a couple of photos, I believe, will yeah. hit my 10,000 or so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so. And I am Elizabeth, and my goal will be to write a 10,000-plus word short story. Do you know what it's about yet? Yeah, I started it. What's it about? I'm not going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> it's a surprise. Later. You'll steal her idea. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to write about vampire write fairies. It's fine. <laughs> not vampire fairies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and check out next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to Storytellers AZ. We'll see you next time. <laughs>